Compute the derivative of the square root of sine of square root x. So let's begin. We have the function y equals the square root of the sine of the square root of x. And let's prep this function. So using uh, the fact that square roots are powers, we're going to have the sine of the expression x to the 1 half, and then this whole thing is raised to the 1 half power. So we have the quantity sine of x to the 1 half raised to the 1 half power. Now that we're prepped, we can take the derivative. So let's get our y prime here. Notice that this isn't a giant expression in parentheses, which means we want to use the chain rule. So the derivative of blank to the 1 half is 1 half blank to the minus 1 half times the derivative of the blank. And the blank in this case is the sine of x to the 1 half. So we'll put that here and we'll put that here. Now we have to take the derivative of sine of x to the 1 half. But you notice that this again has something in parentheses. We have the expression right here, x to the 1 half in parentheses. So the chain rule again, the derivative of sine of blank is cosine of blank times the derivative of blank. The blank is x to the 1 half. The derivative of that is 1 half x to the minus 1 half. And so if we copy down the work we had here, this is our raw derivative. Now we need to go and clean this up a little bit. Notice that the 1 half and the 1 half can be brought together into a 1 fourth. We have an x to the minus 1 half. We have a cosine of x to the 1 half. And then we have a sine of x to the 1 half raised to the power minus 1 half. And so this would be our cleaned up simplified derivative. Now some of you may not be comfortable leaving it like that. You might want to put those minus 1 halves below the fraction bar. And that's completely fine. In this case, this could be simplified as we have a 4 on the bottom, an x to the 1 half on the bottom, and that sine of x to the 1 half to the 1 half on the bottom of the fraction bar. And then we have a lone cosine of x to the 1 half on the top. And so either one of these two expressions is an acceptable version for the final derivative.